into your Thank beautiful, you. beautiful home. So yeah, man, I mean, did you, I actually want to know, did you just wake up one day, you're an artist, you are an MC, you do comedy, you used yeah. to dance, did you just wake up one day and decide, you know what, I'm going to do this? No, it's not that easy. <laughs> <laughs> like, um, yeah, like, like I had a lot of many things that I was interested in as a kid. And um, I think one of the main things that I always thought I was going to be is a, a sketch artist. Because okay. it's like one of the first, first talents I've like discovered mm -hmm. on myself. Um, and I always used to do like sketching. Mm -hmm. And then like also I had this thing where I like to like, I like people and yeah. interesting people and like listening to people. So I thought I might be a psychologist. <laughs> so it was the toss up between like sketching and a psychologist. And mm -hmm. then like, um, and I've been confused all the time and just going around, you know, mm. being getting different influences, the dancing influences, mm -hmm. hip hop influences, things like that. And it was in 2010. That's when I like realized, like, mm. that's when I like got my calling and everything. Yeah. And I think like the Lord spoke to me and showed me like, this is what you need to do. Sure. And then like, yeah, from there I started like, and then he showed me all the talents that he's blessed me with and all the yeah. things that I, he's already given to me and those kind mm. of things. He showed me that in the dream and then I kind of got the understanding that I'm supposed to help people with the things, sure. with these talents. But I didn't know how exactly. So I just went out and started doing it and then like, um, yeah, I started just working on my craft because yeah. I knew like, okay, this is what he wants me to do. Mm -hmm. So I just started working on my craft with the MCing, the comedy, mm -hmm. dancing, beatboxing. Everything. Yeah, I started yeah. working on everything and just like trying to be like really good mm -hmm. at it. And then I didn't understand how am I going to help people. With yeah. this thing. I'm just going to do it. And then like by me performing and those kind of things, you know, mm -hmm. I, a lot of people came to me after the shows and like thanking me and like, sure. I, like, I, like I turned on something yeah. inside of them or like, just shine some kind of a light it touched, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. so i thought okay this is probably what i should be doing you know bringing and it joy. feels right inside. yeah yeah yeah, yeah. And like like feels like joy like i'm bringing joy to the people mm -hmm. and happiness with so. your jokes exactly <laughs> so yeah i felt like okay um i'm probably the messenger of joy and happiness you, yeah. you <laughs> never know that's yeah. unique in actually tell me i mean if i hear what you just said you used to dance you're into hip-hop also yeah. you do beatboxing comedy how do you balance it all man to do it all um most of all trades, I love. <laughs> <laughs> well, I like like now I would say it's according to the the, the jobs that come up. Mm -hmm. So, for example, if I like more comedy gigs coming up, mm -hmm. I'll focus more on comedy. Mm -hmm. If I have a tournament coming up, I'll focus on kai cushion like train, mm -hmm. training lot. Mm -hmm. If I have MC gigs coming up, um, my show my my focus would shift like that. Okay. But otherwise, sometimes I wake up in the morning. And I feel mm -hmm. like this morning I feel like a beatboxer. Yes. <laughs> and I take out the beatboxing and I start beatboxing. Oh. Or today I be like, you know what? I feel like a comedian today. Or whatever. so sure. sometimes I, I so wake you up work on it all the time, basically, because yeah, it depends on what you feel, and, it, and that's more real feeling it. You know, yes, what I mean? yes, you yes. know. Speaking about feeling, it's comedy. Um, yeah. How did you get into that? Because I, I always used to think people just go onto stage and then they just make random jokes. Yeah. But obviously then after we went a few times, we saw that it's actually not that easy. Yeah. Like how did you get into it and how do you how did you test your jokes basically? Yeah. Well, I don't blame you first of all because <laughs> I also thought like people just get on stage and yeah. you're so funny and you just go. Yeah. You know? <laughs> I thought like, whoa, like how could you... That's so cool. But like... um. And comedy is like any other art, you gotta practice it, you know, you have to like, mm -hmm. with comedy, like me personally, I write down my jokes as a script. Okay. So I write down word for word and those kind of things. Other comics will just write down headings. Okay. Then, they, then from there, they just freestyle. Sure. And that's where they like, that's where you like get the feeling like, yo, this guy's just talking like, exactly. off the top. Yeah. So like, um, with me, like I, I like to write down my material and then like, I write it down like, I'll like, I'll get this like rush, like, oh, yeah. I have this amazing idea, yeah. I write it down or whatever, and I'll go put it away, and then as soon as I'm done, I like, I forgot everything that I wrote, and then before I want to yeah. play it, I have to like study it again, like I'm studying a script that sure. someone else wrote for me, and then get it in, and then like, um, how I prepare my jokes mm -hmm. is, I do it mentally, Okay. so I'll just like visualize or whatever, somehow I can see myself on stage, I can see where people are laughing, mm. what punchlines and those kind of things and where does it work and all that stuff. Mm. So I really, so I, and it helps to be a funny person also. Yeah. Because then you know what is funny, what would you sound yourself, funny. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you know what would found, sound funny and like, hey, if I did this like in a stupid way, yes. or like, that would be funny. So I'm like, okay, cool. I add that. So you add those little things mm -hmm. there, wherever and then like, um, when you go on stage, you try to go on without a book or whatever, just yes, try to make it look fluent as mm. possible. And that's when that's when you fool the people and they're like, wow, you're so amazing. amazing. But actually... There's prep. Yeah. With anything, there's prep. With anything, yeah. And I mean, like, um, going to doing this comedy thing, did you ever experience that people don't laugh at some of your jokes? And what do you do when people decide, you know what, eh, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to laugh at well, this? 
Yeah, that is really true and it's real. It happens. Mm. Um, you can be if I'm sure Trevor know even yes. like one of the even the top comedians have yes. experienced a dying moment. Mm. Which us as comics we call it when a you die. die on stage, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when nobody's laughing you die. <laughs> so like I've I've bombed and I've died. Like when your jokes and people don't know that. Yeah. Like, people don't know this. Yeah, things. because they only see some of the good things and they see good yeah. posts on Facebook, but the gigs that you <laughs> that you really die and bomb, you don't really go like, Hey, I died today. <laughs> <laughs> Look at me. Yeah. I'm a dyer. You don't take pictures of the people like, Hey, I so died today, you know. <laughs> Hashtag died. Yeah. So like um that happens and like um especially like if you're going to like places where people are not ready for the comedy okay. like when it's like just like a random night at a, a pub okay. and people just set up like hey let's do comedy here mm-hmm. on every Wednesday mm-hmm. sometimes those people just come there to have a drink or mm-hmm. just socialize mm-hmm. and then there's comedy happening and they're not really in the mood for that uh, so they won't really be so attentive and like try and catch actually. yeah, yeah. Like, and with comedy you need to sit and listen it's not just somebody it, yeah. talking and then someone's talking in the background now, hey yeah. i got that joke uh, you're not listening you're missing it <laughs> you so yeah uh. so i've died before and like i've ever performed to <laughs> where there's no one at all it's just comics i performed the stage like Yo. i performed to a house which is full of people and nobody laughed for a thing <laughs> Yo, that's you won't say and that. i had 10 minutes of death <laughs> and like the thing is what do you do though in that moment do you just carry well, on what the, the right thing to do is to push through it, fight okay. through it, carry on. Mm-hmm. Because sometimes even that person that's not laughing is still impressed by Something. what you Yeah, mm-hmm. but like, you know, I, I like the way that you still went through, you know, exactly. you, you had led no one on your side, but you yeah. still did your thing. Some people are watching see you that in that way. And also like, um, just push through, just push through. What I usually do is I always try to turn up my energy like, oh snap, mm. okay, that's not working with the next joke. I'm going to be more energetic, uh. but then sometimes I go too fast. So so for me it throws me off and then I like get kind of nervous and I feel like I'm not working hard enough. And then I just think of okay the next joke. Sometimes I even change the jokes, the the setting my own. Yeah. So I have like a few jokes which I know always works, and I'll be like, okay, they're not working. Snap. Full back. Yeah. Kick that one out, bring this one in. Like just to save me on stage, like it getting a little bit of applause or Ah. laughter. So that you you can also walk away feeling okay. Yeah. And you learn through that experience. Yes, yes, it does. And now we just spoke about it earlier. You are doing Cape Town Comedy Club. Yes. Correct. So please tell us more about that platform. Is that like a better platform? Tell us more about that experiences, yeah. And how you got into that that's dope yeah cape town comedy club is like um known to be one like the cape town house i mean the comedy house for cape town okay um owned by kurt squindra okay um i don't know where it was his first first building but i know i think it was somewhere in Utsta. Mm-hmm. do not quote me on that <laughs> <laughs> but the second place was at the river club mm-hmm. which he upgraded from the woodstock and mm-hmm. now he's in um the pump house in waterfront which okay. is a nice big comedy joint wow. um they run comedy there from mondays to sundays mm-hmm evenings um show starts at half past eight probably ends around half past ten mm-hmm. um yeah that's a nice huge platform mm-hmm. for comedians like um people come there for comedy mm-hmm. i don't know how much people it seats probably 200 or something wow. like that so that's solid yeah so there's like a bar there there's a restaurant people mm-hmm. have eats something to eat and something mm-hmm. to drink while they're watching comedy and as us for comedians like it's a nice platform because you're coming to like it feels professional yeah sounds on point lighting sure. is on point nice big stage people are here to watch comedy sure. what more could you ask for yeah, you know? that's perfect. so it's just you to bring it it's yeah. just up to you you gotta bring it and it's like good opportunities there like a friend of mine got got a spot to play in the mm-hmm. um I think it's a Jai Funny Fest. Okay. But somebody just seeing him there. Sure. So I was like, hey, man. People actually really come out and yeah. see, maybe they see talent and you never know. Yeah, wow. so I always like to go there with my business card. Just in case, yeah, keep my business card. Like, like hey, know. nice setup. Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Give me yeah, my I'll business card. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it's a nice platform. And like, um, me as a comedian, I found like um, on that pl- platform, I kind of grew uh. with my material because like um, I experimented some jokes and those kind of things. And, and like in the moment when people are when the crowd mm-hmm. is nice you can sometimes just throw in like freestyle mm-hmm. stuff and, just, and if it works you can keep it ah, so that's what you try ah, there in a place like that like lovely. oh the crowd is so lovely you know mm. i can maybe take them on throw a journey in. yeah mm. go a bit a bit of course to see if they're going to follow me sure. like, if they're not if they're not going with it and mm-hmm. they, the laughter's died out bring it back to the jokes it's so important because i never knew you should think about it that much you must actually strategize with, with comedy yeah. you know it's not just a lot of people think you can just go and do it i mean yeah. i thought so and I mean, if I look at acting as well, I want to speak about but about acting also. You mentioned that you were an actor when you when you obviously yeah, yeah. When you need to be one. <laughs> yeah, to be, yeah. 
So a lot of people always think, you know, going into acting, you can become famous. It's all yeah. about, you know, fame. And a lot of people title themselves and speak about it like they know, yet they've never maybe done a class before. Like, yeah. how did you get into it? And, and what's important here yeah, about, about, about acting? Yeah? With, with acting, um, I've never did any professional training for acting, uh-huh. so I never really studied any, I don't mm-hmm. have any diplomas. But um, growing up with my friends, like mm-hmm. a friend of mine used to have a video camera that his, his father like let him play with. Self training. Yeah, yeah. Bye-bye. And then we used to like go to events and like record things and then we like start. We there's one time we did like our own short clip uh-huh. like of a movie like the the Matrix, but uh-huh. we call it the Fake Tricks. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so we were shooting the whole but thing, like, cool. yeah, and then one of my friends was Neo, and then we were, like, the other people, and then we started off like that, like, wow. just, like, trying to imitate movies, you know, and sure. then we play it, and then, and from there, we started doing funny clips, mm-hmm. and then it just progressed, and then funny clips, so that was kind of, like, my acting experience. But it's still because you can use comedy as well with exactly. the acting, wow. So we get to play characters, and, like, I have friends, and my sister also studies acting, mm-hmm. so they would, like, coach us, like, no, do not do ah. this, don't look in the camera when this is happening, or... Ah speak up articulate and those kind of things relax yes all of those things that you need to think about when you're acting yes. so they just told us those things and then like i've done some acting small roles with mm-hmm. mm-hmm. extra or whatever they mm-hmm. or featured extra those dope. kind of things dope. so yeah lovely stuff man and if i mean if i if i think about you mentioned earlier um how you got into the industry like basically god showed you in a dream that yeah. this is what you need to do yeah. you know, you're blessed with all the talents but how do you survive um how do you stay motivated how do you stay motivated every day? It's something I always ask because, I mean, okay. I also sometimes struggle to stay motivated. Like, how do you stay motivated yeah. to wake up every day and be like, you know what, I'm going to do this, you know? Um, how do I survive, first of all? First um, of all yeah. How do I survive is I, I don't know, I, I will keep reminding myself that um, this, this is not a mistake, this is not a chance, I'm not, sure. like, um, I'm not wasting my time, you know, this mm-hmm. was given to me, it's mm-hmm. God-given blessing and I'm so good at it and... <clears throat> How do I survive is I try to like book, like focus a lot on um, MC gigs and okay. comedy gigs because those are the ones that actually bring in the money. Clever, yeah. So like I try to focus a lot on those two. Mm-hmm. I'm always on point and trying to get everything right mm-hmm. and speaking to the people. I have now my you market there. yourself also, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Try and market myself. A lot of people will know me just as an MC or just as a comedian. Yeah. Because that had a lot of like, that's mm-hmm. where I spend most of my energy in. Mm-hmm. So that's how I survive. Also, um, I still live at home and mm-hmm. I don't have major responsibilities. Okay. Mm-hmm. So I'm kind of keeping it like that. But that's good though yeah. because now you know how to plan it. Exactly. So I can take care of myself. So I can invest in myself till I get to that level where mm-hmm. I can take care of myself and yes. move out. Yes. And what was the other thing that you How do you stay motivated? How do I stay motivated? Yes. Um, wow. Like, it would be random things. Like, people tell me after the show, like, look here, please keep doing what yeah. you're doing. It's like, wow, okay, thank you. And, like, um, I like to share what I know. Mm. I don't believe in that you must hold mm-hmm. anything. Like, if it's information or anything, yeah. anything that you can bless the next person with, share it. You sure. know, it makes you feel even better. That's that feeling inside. Yes. That's a better feeling. It makes you grow. Ah. In some way, it makes you grow. It makes you feel better. So, like, um, um, people always tell me, nah, keep doing it, keep doing it. And, sure. like, other people that I see that inspire me also. Mm-hmm. And also just knowing that... Um, this is something that God wants me to do, so I kind of... But it's tough. It's yeah. tough. It's like tough the because... The days we feel... You know, you know how parents are. If you're not yes. bringing the money, you're not doing anything good. And it's 9 to 5 yeah. for all of it. They don't care what you're doing as long as you're bringing the yes. money, then you're doing If you're not doing that, that's like the but old school... I know school what you mean. Yeah. Same so, yeah. Mm-hmm. I know, I understand. So it's kind of tough to break through that and like convince other people, people that you care about, people that actually support mm. you, that you are doing the right thing in exactly. the right track. But then you get other people also, it's like, no, keep running, you exactly. know. Exactly. Even like my brother told me like once, he's like, you don't want to do something that you... You don't want to end up doing something that you don't like doing. So sure. try your best to do what you love doing so you can enjoy life and yeah. whatever. Just keep going at that. Lovely. Ik vat sommer eye for my life. Ik vat the inspiration. <laughs> yeah. And then you're also into fighting. Die man het yeah. talents. So just give us quickly how you got into it. We're going to check out your awards now behind okay. the scenes. Hello. Yeah, okay. tell us so, how you got um, So about four years ago... Um, okay, like I've always been into like martial arts okay. like as a kid. Like, I used to watch movies and I always be like inspired yes. afterwards. I mean, like, fight must be Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I get it so <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know <laughs> nothing, yeah. You just, oh, I'm Bruce No, I'm Bruce No, you're the bad guy. No, I'm So you choose the characters, yeah. And then, like, you, go, you play outside and that's always, like, been, like, always, I've always been fascinated by, like, martial arts and mm-hmm. those kind of things. And then, like, um, I told myself that one day, actually, you mm-hmm. know, I think I'm going to actually do martial arts. Mm-hmm. But I thought, like, I'm going to do boxing. So I was yeah. just like, shadow boxing, like or whatever, do my own kind of thing. And a friend of mine showed me a tape. He's like, yo, what do you know about karate? He's like, karate? He's mm-hmm. like, 
nice in karate, like old school, yeah, like so boring. stuff, yeah. you know, and everything. <laughs> and he's like, no, but I look at this one. And then I found out that you get different art forms of mm-hmm. karate. And then he showed me a clip of Kyokushin karate. Mm-hmm. And I just saw people getting knocked out, knocked out, knocked out. <laughs> I was like, what? Yeah, that's solid fight. Yeah, man. because like if you see karate in the Olympics, it's only on a point system. Yes. It's like, I hit yeah. you there. <laughs> and then it's yeah. like, stop the fight. Okay, <laughs> cool. And then we start again. I got you there. And then yeah. it's like, cool. But this one, you knock down. Like, I only win when, you fall, when, when you're when you lying on the ground. It's like real. It's, it's, yeah. it's real, yeah. So I was like, whoa. And then we did it. And then, like, um, I started doing karate. And then, like, I always had this, like, mentality. Like, I just want to learn how to yeah. do it. And like do it for training, like for personal growth yes. or whatever. And then my sense is like, yeah, we'll see one day when you get strong, you know. And I was sure. like, okay, whatever. And then yeah. just started training hard, focusing on the craft. And they also put a lot of um, focus and things inside of me. So when it came to the day of the tournament, you know, um, I actually wanted to test my strength because yeah. I can't test it in the students. Yeah, obviously. In the class, yeah. yeah, because I was like slightly higher than everyone and they're like kids and things like yeah. that. So you can't really go full out. No, you can't. The same same. Day, <laughs> so I was like, okay, cool. Got thrown in in a tournament, which was my first tournament mm-hmm. ever, my first fight ever actually mm-hmm. in essays. Sure. Um, I defeated my first guy. The second guy defeated me. Should be champs still. <laughs> <laughs> and then after him, I had to fight for third, third and fourth, and then I defeated that guy and came wow. third. But like in every fight, in every fight that I've ever had in Camp mm-hmm. Cushion, I've never fought anyone that's a level lower than me Yo. or the same level oh, as me. It's yeah, always. It's always it's either they they senseis or they people who's well known, well rounded, like Are they've you been. Serious? Yeah, like um, I fought once when I got when I got my jaw broken. Yeah. I fought against um, some sensei guy who teaches and everything, and he's been fighting overseas in like different so places. So his jaw got broken in yeah. the fight. He's a seasoned fight and everything. Um, yeah, we were fighting for first and second, and we were fighting and fighting, and then like um, I got tired. Yeah. And then when you're tired, you can't block, you can't, uh, everything is slow, even your, everything is out yeah. to slow, you like just, <sighs> yeah. so basically like I was a punching bag there, yeah, and shame, then like, um, well I was like throwing a few punches because if I watch the clip, it doesn't, doesn't look like he was beating me all and, the time. And the way you felt obviously, but yeah. you felt worse. But inside I was dead, I was ready mm. to go sit you and chill, yeah, yeah, I was done, I was finished. I was just done, <laughs> waiting for the time. give me tea or something, <laughs> like I'm, I'm done, and then it's like no, like, that what they do is with fighting like um even if they see like the, the two of us are fighting mm-hmm. and i'm gonna have the upper hand over you but you are not showing any weakness like yeah. you're still standing yeah and you take even if you're taking the, the back you're still standing there and you're still yeah. strong they will like make it a draw like what? okay yeah they want to see someone drop i think that's like especially when it comes to th- first and second yeah they want to see someone so strength. you didn't drop no he dropped me with it and then like at point we refer we fought finish we drew and then like they gave us another minute and then we fought and fought and fought and then I was too, he, he, he kind of picked up the pattern that I was yeah. doing. So he saw, okay, he took me in the stomach, my arms dropped and then he kicked me in the jaw. Uh. And then it's like, Kah! and I just felt a hard hit to the head. Oh. I didn't feel pain at the moment. I just felt a I hard hit to the head. Yeah. And I just felt like my foot slip <laughs> underneath me and then the referee woke, woke me up and wow. then I got up. And in that little time, I actually pictured myself getting up and f- fighting on. And then like, and because I told my I friend, say, oh, mentality. <laughs> I told my friend after the fight, I'm like, hey man, but how yeah, often he kicked me, you know, I got up and then we still fought. He's uh-uh. like, no, no, bro. Uh-uh. <laughs> he kicked you, goes, no, for, yeah. I'm like, oh, bro. <laughs> yeah, and the fight ended there and that's when I came It just shows that you have an open. Yeah. Through the struggle, you still have open. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> in my head, I'm still fighting, you know, I never give up. Never give in. In reality, I'm past out. <laughs> so we're going to check out some of his cool awards. Actually, I want to check yeah. that out. Yeah. So let's just check that out. <laughs> anyway, so you've got all these awards here, different belts. You're a black belt now. Yeah. Tell us how does it work? I mean, earlier you mentioned that you actually skipped a few belts, which yeah. was so cool. You did it in four years. So please tell us more about that. Okay. Um, yeah. So like I started doing K Cushion like four years ago mm-hmm. and um, there are a whole lot more belts that should be here. But mm-hmm. like with my sensei, he felt that um, some belts we don't have to go go through. And so you're we... born, you're <laughs> Something like that, but like we skipped a few belts, but like the belts that we skipped are like the in-between belts. Okay. So like the in-between belts usually say like, um, yeah, you kind of are ready for the next level, okay. but you just need a little bit of more in, uh, like attention. Okay. Maybe your, your, your hand is not right or your stancing, you need mm. to work on your stances and things like that. So then the sensor will say, okay, maybe he needs a little bit more attention, you'll give him that belt. Okay. But if you're good enough to go for the next level, he'll give you the next level straight. Mm-hmm. So um, I kind of pushed and made sure. sure that I always like gave it my all. So I kind of like 
Skip. Post, uh, skipped all of those in sure, between belts. Oh, yeah. lovely stuff. So I'm um, black belt now. Took me four years to well get Well done. There. That's yeah. dope. Yeah. <laughs> so you're fighting level is on other. You obviously fighting people with black belts as well. Yeah. Well, um, like like I said, with within tournament, it, it differs. It actually goes with your weight. Mm -hmm. So um, sure. So if you like, if mm -hmm. I'm like now I weigh seventy eight. So mm -hmm. I'm fighting in the. From the category. 60, from some 70 to se from 70 to 80. So I'm fighting in that, sure. in that weight zone. So anyone who falls under there, I can fight. And if it's a if it's a white belt, if he sure. weighs in the 70, work, eh? if it's a sensei that weighs 70, I fight that like that should happen to me. That's been happening. Yeah, to you. yeah, and that's so, how you grow also. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You always grow when you fight someone stronger than you. It's like mm -hmm. what the yeah. like Dragon Ball Z when 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 Goku <laughs> power. <laughs> I've never felt that power before. I it, yeah, it, it Goku. sends you home and you got practice. It's like what? Because now you're like, hey, there's a new level out ah. there, you know? And like I just commit and it's like, like, check like, clock, no, it's guy me. Check clock. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's like you need to get Always. stronger, yeah. yeah. Otherwise, you're gonna be crushed. Exactly. You also represented South Africa. Please yes. tell us about that. Yeah. Um, in 2015, mm -hmm. I represented South Africa in Germany at yeah. the um World K Cushion, well, like yeah. it's a World Cup kind of thing, yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, I'll show you like my jacket afterwards. Then, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so like when I represented the world there, and um, I'm, because of the points that I accumulated here mm -hmm. at home, I went straight through to quarterfinals. Sure. So I, so I, so I skipped prelims, and then um, I went and I fought in the quarterfinals. I fought the Swedish guy, um, my height, probably skinnier than me, but a power that I've never what? experienced before. Like this guy is standing there like normal. And I'm just like, huh, you're huh, going feeding, at him. Yeah, I'm feeding him everything, and he's just like waiting for the perfect top. Bah, bah. <gasps> and I'm like blocking, and he's kicking my leg, but it's sliding out. No. Like, you know, I've never felt a power like that before. You can't judge a book yeah, by its cover. Exactly. And then I was like, and he's so thin, like I can hug him and rub myself. <laughs> and I'm like, him, and it's like so thin. And I'm like, yeah, but. Damn. But it's a kilo. Yeah. And these and these awards right here, what are they for? Yeah, these these awards I I got it. Um, uh, <laughs> participating at the tournaments here. Mm -hmm. um i basically like kind of like climbed the ladder yeah so like with my very first tournament um mm -hmm. i came third place yeah i came third place essays mm -hmm. wow that was that was my very first tournament and awesome. first time fighting ever lovely and then um i think we're second place yeah then it was the following year it becomes bigger the higher yeah yeah, yeah 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 <laughs> the following year um i entered western province uh-huh and then i came second place there awesome the western province gave cushion for content mm -hmm. And then last year, Solid. yeah, last year I made oh, the first place. You must believe. You can see it's fully gold. That one isn't fully yeah, gold. Yeah, so that's yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it's it's first gold. place. So first place, I have made it there. And then um, first place, Western Province, fully gold. Yeah. Lovely. Well done. <laughs> and then man. this trophy I got in the dojo for like um, usually when we have like an end of year function. Okay. Uh, which is called the Tamashawari. Mm -hmm. So like your parents and everyone can come. Just awards. Then, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. So we did like a, like a like a demonstration of hey, this is what we do. And blah 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 and then we do like breaking of boards and wow. punching through roof tiles and breaking like baseball bats movies. yeah that's the just like the movies yeah. <laughs> so like um i got this trophy for kicking through three staffs you know three staffs like that huh? like that kick through like that. Yo, <laughs> Bruce Lee Bruce Lee style. Style. <laughs> that's so cool yeah. it's cool to see your achievement it's cool how you also worked hard and achieved stuff that people take longer to achieve but Thank it's you. all about the mindset man. Yeah. So, so well done on that then also just to come back to everything i mean can you just share some nice Nice moments or highlights in in your career so um, for, for you as in as in, in everything general, in, in general. general yeah um i have kind of moments in k cushion mm -hmm. beatboxing and everything mm -hmm. so i'll just go through each yeah. other with karate i think the moment the biggest moment for me was um one of my big moments was i think getting first place yeah no first place yeah it because does. like like the first year i came there i came third place second year i came second and this time i was like no we aren't. i really want to get first place and no. i want to feel how it feels to stand on that podium oh, like, yes, yeah, yes, yeah 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 <laughs> and like being recognized by people okay cushion yeah. be like yeah i came first and speak. Then, yeah mm. so i was like yeah <laughs> i made it you know like because uh. i really wanted to come first place that time i mm -hmm. like really but the other all the tournaments, I was just going in there like, okay, I'm wow. just going to go, I'm going to fight, see where I come. Tweet at the yeah. place, <laughs> <laughs> when I came first place, I was actually putting my arm wow. up. Wow. So uh -huh. that was my highlight in K Cushion. Mm -hmm. And I think the Germany trip I was more afraid of. <laughs> <laughs> so I, don't, I wouldn't say it was a highlight, yeah. but I've learned a lot you and learn. I grew a lot since then. But mm -hmm. I wasn't really looking forward to it. Yeah. <laughs> and then um, with beatboxing, I think it was the time when I 
introduced like the loop station to a lot of people that didn't know yeah. don't know about beatboxing the art so like i finally performed like in the way that i saw myself performing ah, beatboxing one picture. day yeah 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 and i and like the, the day came and i did it and got a good response and it was like i like ah, for beatboxing dope. in comedy it has to be maybe um in my first few few months or mm-hmm. first few, like the first year of doing comedy i got invited to go and perform at the the nando's funny mm-hmm. festival ah. where they flew down um some celebrities from ah. celebrity comedians from overseas um, um celebs like um i forgot the guy's name now from police academy the, the guy with the sound effects oh <laughs> it's your tour with that yes yes sound effects. yeah um, it's informed i know what you're talking about mike sure something mike mike i know what you're talking about yes, yeah yes. that's the, the sound effects in yeah, everyone knows yeah. him from police you know academy yes i i performed with him on stage also wow. um orlando orlando jordan He was also one of the comics and then I, I don't I forgot the names of the other That's comics. Dope. So for me like hey I'm only doing comedy like I could count on my hand how many gigs I've done and I'm performing with these big cats sure. on this like big platform. Human. Yeah, yeah, like on this huge platform there was there was like there was like a huge I like wow. in comedy. And then for MCing uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you do it so many times. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like there's so many gigs that I enjoy uh-huh. like hey it was a good one and, like I've grown and people like mm-hmm. Yeah, and then I think that's like for me like what's what's always a highlight is when someone comes to me and I can show them something mm-hmm. or teach them something and they've like learned and like they so like thank you thank you and for me yeah. to like oh, actually pass that on like yeah. I also feel good like I could actually yeah. pass on that something that, to someone exactly. you know like the way you I can understood learn something yeah and teach someone so like I Beautiful. think those those all those all things are like make me feel happy exactly, kind of like yeah. a highlight you can see yeah, it's a passion you you really love what you're yeah. doing yeah and I mean if you look at the dancing I mean you've been in the dancing yeah. you've danced I mean you're in the dancing still what do you think can we still do to grow more here in Cape Town or in South Africa I think um well with a lot of artists and I think with especially with dancers too like we 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 focus a lot on ourselves mm-hmm. and like I'm building ourselves and crafting ourselves mm-hmm. and where can I go where can I improve mm-hmm. on myself True. I think what we should try and focus more is teaching more mm-hmm. giving like, back yeah yeah teaching more even if it's like even if you're not doing like the proper things you know mm. just teach someone to move yes. teach him what you know get him on your level at least get him interested yes. from there they can branch out further exactly. for example like B-boy Tofik you mm-hmm. he, he was just a normal kid from the from yeah. the hood Angelo taught him something. True. You know, like, and then from Town. there he branched on, you know? Yeah. And now he's like one of the top B boys here in Cape Town. Simple stuff. In and he's known like around the world because oh. he's competed like internationally. So you never know how far someone else can take it. True. You just you just show him one and two. Like planting and then that go. seed. Yeah, sure. exactly. You plant that seed and then so people need to plant more seeds, invest in more people because kids the are kids out there that want to dance exactly. and do these things exactly. but they don't have facilities or, or you know want how. to teach them yeah exactly so they can just see on movies and then they just do the thing yes. in the garden and it's that's yeah. clear there's they no motivation behind exactly. that also exactly but if there's someone that can teach them something and also more events for them to come to yes. so that they can see like exactly. oh what's happening you can actually make something of yourself yeah, yeah. let yeah. them be in, let them be inspired mm-hmm. inspire mm-hmm. them so uh-huh. like, yeah i, I love it man like and that's also your passion to want to see people grow and and give back um of your passion also yeah. and then where can people catch you performing and how can they support you social media wise okay um on social media wise you can you can catch me as um lunga chuka on mm-hmm. facebook that's my name and surname l u n g a t s h u k a lovely and then uh, <laughs> um on i'm not on twitter that much but i do have a twitter handle but it's at lunga chuka okay uh If you see me tweet, woo. <laughs> be excited. Retweet because because <laughs> that's probably the first tweet in, in this year. And then like um, I'm on Instagram as well as Olunga. Oh, mm-hmm. one Lunga, sorry. Mm-hmm. And then yeah, but like um, I have a Facebook page for for the comedy and the entertainment mm-hmm. side. So mm-hmm. that's Lunga Chuka, the MC comedian. Mm-hmm. I post most of my gigs and things like that. So people mm-hmm. can always check up on there, like where I'm, when I'm performing mm-hmm. and what I've what I've done, other videos and things like that. And just off the top, I think my next gig that I'm performing will be next week at mm-hmm. the Cape Town Comedy Club. Okay, cool. So I'm there on the 22nd, which mm-hmm. is Wednesday evening, mm-hmm. the 23rd and Thursday evening, mm-hmm. and then on Sunday, which is the 26th. Awesome stuff, man. We yeah. wish you all of the best. I love it. It gets inspired. Thank you. But I mean, seeing that you love to share, you know, you believe in sharing and it's a highlight when you can teach someone something. I want to I want to learn how to beatbox. But first, you're going to do it. Do okay. your thing. And then you're going to show me like, a, a, I'm going to say a move or two because I want that dance. <laughs> yeah. A beatbox or two. You can show me. All right. Cool, cool. So you can so first I, go, yeah. So I just do it like you that? You can just get it in. Cool. Okay, cool. Um. <laughs>
So like um yeah so with beatboxing um let me just get something quickly okay, cool. quick Right so mm-hmm. just got a little Sorry. notepad here so I just wanted to like tell you like um with beatboxing anybody can beatbox Really? So yeah it's not really a thing of hey you're so special how do you do that with your mouth you know it's I just like it's like it's like any other art form these techniques and mm. things like that and it's a lot of practice mm-hmm. so I'm just going to give you like kind of make it very very simple for you and write some beatboxing notes for you so oh, you can Oh, thanks, see. huh? So, what is in your little battle echo? <laughs> so when you're when you trying to teach someone beatboxing, you always want to try and let them know like um you want to try and like write it out in notes for them. Okay? So for example, when I our uh, beatboxing is a bunch of letters when you write it out in notes. So, let's just do something like a B Ah, Bits. so Bits. there is the B and then T S S and then K S S. So Sh. what you do in beatboxing, you make the sounds of these letters. Okay. So B would be your, and then T S S would be your high it now, and then your K S H K S H sorry will be now your snare. So if you put that together, then you just kind of repeat it all time. So you put a. Let's put another T S S there. Uh-huh. So we we just loop that. Yo, is there like a workshop to do this? Is like this is <laughs> yeah. I beatbox? actually actually like figured out the whole workshop, like a whole beatboxing what? workshop. What? That's teach real. People. Okay. So like um, mm-hmm. so like if you see if you put this together here, yeah, so you will have your. <laughs> yeah, and eventually doing the beat of Michael saying the. <laughs> so like yeah so this is like the basic basic okay. basic beatboxing if mm-hmm. i like to like teach anyone mm-hmm. so it's like it's the cap the, the b also like um b and small b mm-hmm. capital b and a small b could mean different okay. like different sounds so it's and so for example um if your beat has like a double kick like like Yeah. Yay! Yeah, so like basically Papa. like beatboxing. So like just figure out things like um it's just like a bunch of writing it out and, and it, it makes sense to you. Making the sound of the actual letters. Ah. So B would be a B. The T would be t, t. So if you want to anyway you know to make that sound in the word is T S. So and then you get again K or with each, actually with a P, but that one is kind of difficult. That's yeah, right. That's high grade. Right? Yeah, I would. Yeah, yeah. That's how it is. So. <laughs> so what I want you to do is, I just want you to try and loop this quickly. Just loop them. Yeah. Huh? I guess a musician. Nico so Spiel. it's. Okay. Keep going. Okay. I'm gonna add on to you. joining us and sharing your story and sharing your your talent with us that's it from us here in a walk with mal guys season two signing out